So I grew up in uh, what would be called like the Novus Ordo expressions, the New Order of Mass, uh, and um, uh, born in 1979, right? Uh, and grew up in your average st standard suburban parishes, uh, as as I was in Louisiana and then in Knoxville, Tennessee, right? Uh, and so I, I grew up in these just your average. Uh, post-Vatican II uh, suburban parish environment. And so I only knew the faith through that lens. And so we had guitars strumming and, and, and you know, your, your kind of uh, contemporary hymns that, you're, that everybody's familiar with uh, and liturgy that was very people-centered, you know, where everybody's uh, holding hands at the Our Father and doing all these kind of things, right? And then I went off to seminary uh, with that as my kind of only experience of the faith, liturgically speaking, right? And in the seminary, I started reading all the documents of the Second Vatican Council. And one of them is the document on the liturgy, Sacrosanctum Concilium. And I remember reading that document and saying, this doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't know what they're talking about, propers and ordinaries uh, and the, you know, all these different parts of the Mass and these various things that, that they were uh, talking about needing reform and, and trying to introduce this and that and the other. And, and it, it, it was just almost like this is a foreign language to me. Uh, don't, don't even understand what's, what's going on. Well, then after I was ordained a priest... I was uh, introduced to the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite. They hadn't even, well, they had just called it that because it wasn't until about 2007 when Summorum Pontificum, that motu proprio from Benedict XVI came out, uh, liberalizing the use of the, uh, the Latin Mass, the traditional Latin Mass, so-called. Uh, and it was in that moment when I was asked to offer that Mass on behalf of uh, some young people that wanted to, to have it. Uh, so I started learning it, and I learned the traditional Latin Mass, and it was almost like light bulbs starting to go off, uh, scales falling from my eyes. And I was able to, to go back to Sacrosanctum Concilium of the Second Vatican Council, and I finally had the context in, uh, 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 in which this document was issued. I finally had the backdrop to understand what the church was actually asking for in the reform of the liturgy. And it almost was a, a source of scandal for me to see how maybe what we had been doing was not exactly what Sacrosanctum Concilium had actually asked for or called for, the Second Vatican Council. I found a great richness, and it was almost like a, 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 a bittersweet moment for me. Like it was sweet in the sense of, I found this awesome treasure of traditional things, uh, you know, the, the propers of the Mass, uh, the, the ad orientum posture, uh, the transcendental uh, emphasis uh, and the sacrificial nature of the Mass and the priesthood and, and what, what it is that we were actually doing in, in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But it was bitter because I thought, where has this been all my life? Why was this hidden from me? It was like it had, all the beautiful heirlooms of our faith had been put into a, tre a treasure chest and hidden, buried, stuffed up in an attic, growing uh, dust all over it. And here I am dusting it all off, opening it up and examining it and just being overwhelmed by how beautiful and good and true these things are. And so that's what I characterize as the joy of tradition, right? To rediscover the church's perennial expressions of faith that incarnate to us the, the, the message that Jesus Christ, true God and true man, suffered and died for us, rose on the third day, gave us the memorial of his sacrifice that we offer and, and make present to us, uh, and in this mystical way, renew uh, every time we uh, celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And that was, for me, the source of this joy of tradition.